All right, we're here with another review, this time reviewing Mank, a David Fincher film that was wrote, written by his uh, father in, the, I believe, the 1990s before he passed in the early 2000s. Uh, this is an adaptation of a Herman J. Mankiewicz um, who wrote Citizen Kane over the course of, what is it, two months, three months? something like that I, yeah 60 days right that was the day yeah the, yeah not time to keep repeating yeah something like that yeah uh so this will be a spoiler review just so everyone knows um so we'll, let's get right into it it's about the story of it's it's not just citizen kane in the making of i think if you're looking for just a straight up the making of citizen kane uh that's not exactly what this is though that does play a large part uh just go watch I, I, behind the scenes of citizen kane yeah Exactly. But it has a, what I, what I love about this film is it's commentary on Hollywood and it's commentary on politics um, and how those two things blend together is it's really interesting when you see um, like the campaigns that they, they throw out these newsreels, right? These fake newsreels uh, of how, you know, they, they knew they were fake and they just, did it anyways because they knew it would win. It was a right narrative, right? And the narrative mattered more than the truth to Hollywood. Um, and that's something that feels really relevant today when we're in the era of, you know, everything is fake, you know, everyone's calling everything fake news. And, you know, there seem to be these narratives that are being pulled and it's, it's confusing to people who are, you know, just in the society and it's, you know, people are being manipulated by, you know, these Hollywood type things. So that was one of the things I found really relevant. And the other thing um, was the industry and how it's not just Hollywood. It's also like big corporate industry in general and how, you know, they have the, the small, the lower down people in the industry take the pay cuts. Well, the guys up top are still doing just fine, you know, and they're struggling during the freaking Great Depression where people have nothing. And they're like, they don't care. They just care about the industry. There's no remorse about employees losing their job or, you know, remember the guy who gets like, begs for $1, right? It's like people have gone that desperate and these guys are still at the top profiting, like so much money. And I think Herman J. Mankiewicz and Gary Oldman as that character does a really good job portraying like a liaison for the audience of you know while he's a drunk and like a complete mess he does have principles and he recognizes how crazy this whole situation is and whether he acts on it that's a completely different thing but he does recognize it so those are just some of my initial thoughts we'll get more into it later but nick what were your initial thoughts about the film I thought, I thought it's funny that this film came out a year after Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood because both films are like the antithesis to each other in a way. Like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was like a love letter. It was like kind of talking about like 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 this crazy part of America. And um, and then he, and like, it, but for the most part, like, you know, even though you see like DiCaprio's character, like, kind of like struggling in the industry for the most part it was like this like rosy like like fond nostalgic tinged like memory of this era and then here comes mank and mank completely like demolishes the the area and i, I would just like love to see like um what tarantino thinks because the, like these two films are like just perfect like op are complete opposites one's like paying homage and like is like an ode to it the other one is just like he's it's calling out calling it out on its own bs and so um I, I thought that was like very interesting like because a lot of the film was being marketed or at least a lot of what people assumed about the film was that it was like citizen kane like behind the scenes but it's really not that like citizen kane doesn't even really like citizen kane at most is a plot device to help like move the storyline it's really just about this guy who's like caught up in this like industry that he like at first he doesn't take seriously like i thought his one line um when he like arrives home drunk and like his like wife or whatever is like helping him undress and he's like that movie wizard of oz is not going to amount to anything and it's just like <laughs> a really funny, like idiot like meta moment because it's like well you'd, you'd be surprised and um 
like he doesn't take the industry serious at all and then like he le- realizes like far too late he's like this is an absolute like awful machine i've like found myself stuck in and like um like, gary oldman does great amanda uh Seyfried, hopefully i pronounced that last name right the great i think like even a lot of the supporting cast like this scene like behind me is like one of my fa- has one of my favorite lines when um louis v mayer is like um emotion from a film comes in two places here here and then he grabs his nuts like here and i'm just like that was one of my that was one of my favorite lives just like a, it's like in a tracking shot the other the mankowitz brothers are just like following along like nodding along it's just like a funny moment and i don't know he this film puts the industry like it puts the industry as depicts the industry as it is and like mankowitz is just sort of like trapped like within it and like that's why like he uses his, the script of citizen king to kind of like throw up one last middle finger to to everyone i thought that was like i thought that was pretty interesting and it's just a very like the way they cut through the timelines i understand um they mimicked a lot of it on how citizen kane actually was so it by the time you hit the end like there's this whole encompassing impression of who the guy was that i thought was very interesting right and they have that line of um you can't tell someone's full story in two and a half hours but you can give the impression of who they are and that's it's like a you don't realize it's a meta quote until you finish the movie right and that's exactly what the movie is about right Mm -hmm. um just going over we're gonna get into some stylistic things but i just want to go through acting um i've read some stuff about amanda seyfried uh if that's how you pronounce her name sorry if it's wrong yeah um being up for oscars possibly i like Mm -hmm. her in this role um i don't see that okay perfectly honest i mean gary oldman's good i think he's very good yet again i'm not sure if i quite see an oscar or like a nom from that well see because like again like it's so much harder to predict around this time because they extended the uh the when the oscars were so like there's still like a whole like three months left of movies waiting to like spring someone or something on us I don't. I mean, I get. We're gonna do our, I guess, our Oscar predicts video before this year wraps up, or some point in the early twenty one. But I feel like, depending on what's been released, I think he might be like, well, of all the performances that were, that were shown, I think it's like a, it would be a, it wouldn't be the most outrageous thing if they were like, yeah, like you know, we'll just throw him in there for the sake. Like I think, of taking account of of like who who had movies released, I think it would be like it would be it wouldn't be the most outrageous thing. Right. right. As of what I've seen so far, I think he would be like Mm -hmm. just ranks purely from a ranking perspective, but from a like quality of acting performances that I'm used to being at the seeing at the Oscars as far as noms go, he's like, like right on the border of like, I could put him on, but I'm not sure who I did. Go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say this might be uh, Rami, Rami Malek as Freddie Mercury type thing like not that I didn't enjoy Rami Malek as like um Freddie Mercury I think that was like a great performance but I feel like the two both as like seeing their biopic performances I feel like they hit similar notes in some ways that I feel like again could earn him that like nomination in spite of everything yeah what I will say is I thought Lily Collins was really good in this film um she was the secretary right Yes, yes. The, his, like, his like typist, yeah. Okay. Correct. I thought she was really good in this film in her small role. Um, Charles Dance in the few scenes he's in. You guys probably know him from uh, Game of Thrones. Uh, he was also in, uh, he's a bad guy in Godzilla, uh, the second one, mm-hmm. King of the Monsters. Right. Um, he was great in his few scenes. He has the, the big scene where uh, Herman's at the party with the long table and he gets way too drunk and goes on pitching this movie you know and is just basically roasting everyone at the table uh and then i can't i wish i could remember um charles's retort when he's walking him out and like kicking him to the curb essentially or he tells him the uh the parable of the organ grinders monkey that's right. his big scene that was the big quote yeah that scene is like that scene is so so fantastic or the retort is um but let's get into some of the stylistic stuff so one the choice to go black and white two the choice of sound design to go with a like realist uh 
time accurate 40s sound design. How did you feel about those two choices? I feel like um, because I've also seen the 2011 Best Picture winner, uh, The Artist, which was like pretty much a silent, it was a, it was a silent film. But I feel like in comparison to this, like it was deliberate for Mank, while The Artist, it was just kind of like in the same vein as Once Upon a Time. It was like an ode, like it was done like as a tribute. While here, I feel with Mank, it was more like a deliberate like callback, but it wasn't not just like a, and I thought it was like just a deliberate um, stylistic aesthetic choice. Um, I'm just like trying to like remember any certain scenes. I don't know, like like just like like fade outs. Like they would do like those cheesy like you know like fade outs in the midst of scenes. They were like um, like just yeah the musical cues. I thought it was just a deliberate like um, usage of like immersion and like representation of the times. I will say there were some definitely some like really gorgeous like shots that they managed to pull up that I don't know how they would have looked in color. There's one in particular where um, like they come back to the scene like at the party they announced the Republican guy won and like Manx like kind of has like smoke around him and like there's a light like it's more of a silhouette than anything. That was a beautiful shot that I like so there was just certain stuff like that I'm like you wouldn't you couldn't have pulled that off in color. I mean maybe you could have but like it just seemed more enhanced than black and white. Here's my here let's let's start with what you were saying at the end and then i'll work back to what i'm gonna work to um with the set design did some of the sets seem like they were painted backgrounds to be like what it was at the time because i couldn't tell because like clouds weren't moving and so i was like are those sets painted yeah you know what i mean how like they would do in the olden days and it was hard for me to tell like there i kind of like, got the feeling that they were there was like one scene where it was like him and lily collins and they're like watching out the landscape and i saw that and i was like that's very clearly they're looking at like a solid like like painting or wall but at the same time i feel like again they're just evoking the era so it's kind of like i was like okay like but yes i i know what you're talking about like just certain like just set like appearances yeah i mean i didn't have a problem with that at all i'm just saying that i you know is something I noticed as them trying to be um, historically accurate because they're trying to make a movie that's like a movie from the 40s or the 30s. Um, the other thing that I really liked is I like how they titled each scene like it was a scene in the script. Um, as someone who loves doing screenwriting, like that was just kind of a little joy. I like, you know, it clarifies for the audience, is the scene a flashback or not, right? Because there are a lot of flashbacks throughout the film. And so for someone like uh, my mom, who might have a lot of questions, of like when this is going on timeline wise, that really clarifies it. Um, the one thing is the sound. And I understand they're trying to be accurate, but I don't know if it's because I'm at, you know, I'm at home and I don't have great sound systems compared to theaters, but the sound you know most of the time it's fine but there there's sometimes where i feel like there's important dialogue and i'm struggling to hear it um or understand what exactly they're saying there are a few times that i had to like go back rewinding just to figure out exactly what they're saying so i i almost wonder if this theater would have been a better experience if it was on the big screen in a big you know theater with a sound system if it if it may have impacted how i feel about this film So Nick, is there anything else on this film that you want to touch on as far as story, visual aspects, sound aspects, directing in general? Well, I guess that's the one thing I definitely wanted to segue to is like, how, how much of a Fincher film did this feel? Because I know for me, um, I've only seen two films from Fincher thus far. I'm planning to expand like what I've seen, but I've only seen Zodiac and I've seen The Social Network. And these two, and like Mang is like, I feel like odd one out and not just because like of the obvious like, era setting and like black and white but i just feel like because at, at one end it does feel like a fincher film but at the same time i feel like there was a certain like ha like haunted quality to zodiac and like social network like a little more display of that obsessiveness like that i feel like wasn't a, a pro like there and i'm not saying like this was like a negative against the film i'm just like trying to like reconcile like like all of these were made by the same guy. Like, what's the similarities? What's the differences? Just because, like, Herman Mankiewicz is a very, like, focused... Actually, I don't know about focus. He's definitely a lot more all over the place than, say, Mark Zuckerberg or um, Jake Gyllenhaal from Zodiac. Like, the, those characters went down, like, giant rabbit holes. 
And so, um, um, uh, let's see, like those characters went down giant rabbit holes to like their like um, like destinations. Well, I feel like Mankiewicz was just always like, I don't know. It, it, it's just a different type of like Fincher film. And like even keeping in mind is the guy behind like Mindhunter. It just felt a little different. I'm just like, again, not a bad thing. I'm just like fascinated by like how this is like kind of like the, like the, not odd, I guess odd one out. Yeah, is probably the best way to describe it. Yeah, I found this really, really fascinating because I've watched, um, like you said, I've watched Zodiac. I've watched, um, oh gosh, A Social Network. And I've also watched uh, Panic Room, which he did, which is like an odd one out of type of films. So that's a more Hollywood one. And I'm currently watching uh, Mindhunter, which he he's directed a lot of the episodes. He's an EP. He's kind of, I think I believe he's the showrunner on it or was a showrunner on it. I think it's discontinued now. But it's, it's the way it's shot feels very similar. Um, Fincher uses mostly like put the camera on a tripod and go from there as opposed to some, he's not a steady cam guy really. I mean, it's used sometimes. Dollies are used a lot, like the shot behind you, right? One of the best, I, I love that scene. In, in a minute from walking from one place to another, um, I can't remember the character's name, but he's the you know head, head of the studio. Louis B. Mayer. Yeah, he, he tells yeah. you, he ex- basically explains to you one monologue, like what Hollywood is. Um, and the way he directs scenes like that, it, there's just some of the shots, some of the shots like from, uh, from Mankiewicz go, driving, it's right before the guy commits suicide, right? When it turns out that he doesn't just have the bullets, he has a whole box of them, right? And he, that revelation comes out. Just the simple shot from seeing him pull up and the camera just, I, can't, I think it's on a crane. It just slowly goes up and up and up and up and up and then in um, as Mankiewicz is coming up to the house. Like there, there's little stuff like that, that some of the shots are just so expertly crafted. You hear about how meticulous he is in making sure everything is perfect. I mean, the way he uses movement in making shots more interesting, the way he stages shots, I mean, all that stuff is just, it, it's next level in every film he does. I noticed it on this um, as well, maybe to a little bit of a lesser extent than something like uh, the social network, but I thought it was pretty fantastic from a directing standpoint. Yeah, I know, I, I, I agree on that. I just think, it just like felt like for me, like there were certain moments where I was like, it feels like, like it just feels, it just, it just felt different, which again, is not a bad thing. Like, you know, you'd love to see the like diversity and like this shakeup of film of the director, but- Hold on, you're, you're glitching out. Oh, sorry yeah do you want do you now? just want to say that again yeah yeah I would. um um so i was just like i just I'm, again it wasn't a bad like directing performance at all it's like i think he definitely may have secured a directing nomination just like like i guess they, like this film overall is probably going to secure a lot of nomination just because like hollywood on a surface level loves to like <laughs> like re- like watch about itself which would be hilarious because this movie's a, essentially a middle finger to the industry, the, like some of the things it talks about. So like, that'd be really hilarious if like they give this best picture just because it'd be so like idiosyncratic. Um, but like, it, it's like, it just felt different from the social network from Zodiac. And I just like, I enjoyed that and found that like really fascinating that like he like branched out this way. Um, what's the one thing I want to, I think, um, cause I was thinking like what made the two films different in that, compared to Mank, I think a lot of it, um, and I'll get your feelings on this, was the ending, because like Zodiac ends, you know, Robert Graysmith, Jake Hall, Hall, like, like kind of like comes face to face with the killer, I guess that's spoilers, sorry, and then like Social Network ends with that haunting shot of like Jesse Eisenberg just kind of like on his computer, like kind of looking like dead in, inside, and he right. like he won the Academy Award, and then like that was kind of it. I, I don't know, I just like, how'd you feel about that ending? Gosh, this film, the third act of this film, you know, I think the first act, maybe two acts is for everyone, right? It has enough to be entertaining and keep on going. Uh, The second act gets a little bit more into the political stuff. By the third act, I feel like if you're not a real, like, massive fan of movies 
in like Hollywood and the industry as a whole, it kind of takes away from it. I feel like the more you know, the better this film is. And, you know, we're film students and we take a lot of classes. And I just feel like it didn't quite hit as hard. In the, in the final scene, it's like, you know, it's the last screenplay he ever really wrote. He got co-writing credits for it. I've read about it. I mean, it's really unclear who, were, you know, after the first draft, how much was changed, whose ideas were what. It seems like it was really kind of a crazy mess of a situation. Right. But I don't know. The film... It, I didn't leave the film feeling like I was satisfied as an audience member. I think yeah. that's the best way of me putting it. And like, there's been films like like art house films that have like done like open ended endings, but I like um, but I don't know. I just feel like it all. There was always like some sort of like exclamation mark where you can say like, like it's not closure, but it's something. And I feel like like just the title card at the end when like um they were talking about yeah, like he never made another original screenplay. I was just like I in my head I was like. Does this mean that uh, um, Hearst like like barred him? Does this mean he just went off the deep end after this? Like it was like a like a one hit thing, and then he just kind of like petered off. I just kind of feel like confused. Like 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 that was it. Like that was like he won his Academy Award. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I don't know. I just the ending doesn't feel quite right. It feels like if I it was my film professor watching it right from like ANA film ANA which is a class we took our first semester in college you know i feel like this is the type of film they would probably love because they have all this back background knowledge on the whole history of everything so it would feel they would understand every little intricate detail of it whereas i think us who are maybe one step removed enjoy it a little bit less even though i still like the film as for the commentary of it and, but I think the average person may not like this film, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, this is Fincher's most, uh, what's the word, like niche, like film. Like everyone can watch Zodiac and like, like you know, that's like, like a general crime thriller social network is like for a biopic is like just very expertly, you know, crafted. And I just feel like Mank just on a subject matter basis, like, again, you got to be like really passionate about Hollywood or you have to be like really read up on your research to like know what's happening, especially like at the end, like, like, you know, Orson Welles like comes in like someone might be like well why does this guy matter like even though he's one of the most like influential like filmmakers of all time like yeah it's especially like that third act like there's so much like so much hinges in that but that's when like it's like that's when the film really becomes like a niche like subject area like I think I think what really kind of like helped stabilize it was um you mentioned it earlier his like drunken rant at the dinner table like I think that's where old men might have secured his um uh acting nomination just because like he's like he's like, like like angry he's like making fun like he's like pissed off and he's just like completely plastered out of his head so i feel like that scene alone kind of helped stabilize it it's just like the parts where they're like oh yeah he won the academy award like at least like from what i understand like you could have like cut that and like just focused on him at his like little like like lodge or whatever and then that could have like helped um cap things off maybe a little smoother i don't know um maybe do for a rewatch <laughs> yeah it'll definitely get a rewatch for me um i'm gonna go watch citizen kane um because i want to see i wanted to see it from a perspective of someone who had and hadn't watched it um to see how that changes how the film's viewed so i may watch citizen kane and go watch this film and say it is significantly better because of me watching C citizens kane um but as of right now, um, let's go into our final part, which is just where it kind of ranks for us this year. I have it at number eight as of now on my list of films from this year. Um, I had a gentleman, which I really, really enjoyed. Um, I think this, this film has the intelligence and the kind of backing from that perspective but it does kind of miss out on some of the more just pure entertainment aspects. Uh, I think you're muted. Whoops, I'm <laughs> um, just pulling up my own ranking list. You said number eight for you, right? Yeah. 
see i actually haven't put it down yet i'm like i'm gonna give it like a few days to like settle and like um how my thoughts are i feel like yeah it's definitely going to be like top 10 i just don't know if it's going to be like top five because like my top five right now is like the five bloods trial to chicago seven and i feel like i don't know i feel like, like this like mank is i feel like a lot denser than some of these films so that's just going to require like more viewings to like unpack but like i don't know i don't know this this is going to be top 10 i'll like right now short estimate might be it's it might surpass actually bad education i need to rewatch the five bloods to see if it'll catapult over that but um i don't know like i again i love the aesthetic of the film i think old men inside free did great and like even um whoever plays louis b mayer and like who plays um Yusa charles stands is hearst they were great directing is directing is great and i love how it's just like this antithesis to like what hollywood would expect of a movie about hollywood um i just feel like also this is like a relatively like colder movie in terms of emotion sometimes i don't know if you felt that same way but like compared to like delroy lindo and the five bloods or even like um eddie redmayne's like anguish in trial to chicago seven i feel there's a it's like a little more of a colder film like you don't like mankowitz as like nice and like as like forward thinking and progressive of a guy he is he's also notoriously like abrasive and like um just like like a good very abrasive presence so i feel like we don't get to like like be like yes like I, I sympathize with you or at least, at least I empathize with you type thing so I feel it's definitely as a colder film like that might affect where it ends up for me yeah yeah I think that's a good point um I have it it could go as high as six for me and as low as eight I think it's between six and eight as of right now for me I will, um, I will it's not yeah. oh sorry <laughs> I mean. it's not getting ahead of um to me, The Invisible Man, Palm Springs, The Five Bloods, Bad Education, and Trial of the gotcha. Chicago Seven. But gotcha. anything else I think is fair game to move ahead of. But what were you going to say? I was going to say, like, even though, like, this may not be, like, even crack my top five, I will say this is definitely probably going to secure, like, the most Oscar nominations out of some of the films we've made, which, again, is going to be hilarious just because of the subject matter. But, like, you know... You make a movie about what is often regarded as the most well done movie in history and you know how we're just gonna go like crazy for it like at the very least i hope maybe depending on like something else released that like fincher may maybe get his his oscar for directing because he hasn't yet which has blown my mind but um uh who Don't knows we'll see about like, that <laughs> <laughs> like i he does i think he secured himself a nomination and um again we'll delve more into oscar predicts later like in a later video but i i if this is the video if this is the time he finally wins it i wouldn't be like mad about it like it's been long due yeah i mean he wouldn't be my first choice as of right now but what i will say is he does deserve it because in the social network there was no reason for him not to get the award for best director there that's the best yeah. film of the decade 21st there was century no to be honest there's no reason for the social network like no offense to the king's speech um which i haven't seen and i hear it is legitimately good there's no reason social network should not have won for whatever yeah. reason yeah but that wraps up our review of mank uh let us know what you thought down in the comments section below don't forget to like and subscribe to the video and we'll see you next time peace out